In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ of mercy. Christ of mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, When Israel was a child, I loved him. Out of Egypt I called my son. The more I call them, the farther they went from me, sacrificing the Baals and burning incense to idols. Yet it was I who thought Ephraim to walk, who took them in my arms. I drew them with human cords, with bands of love. I fostered them like one who raises an infant to his cheeks. Yet, though I stooped to feed my child, they did not know that I was their healer. My heart is overwhelmed. My pity is stirred. I will not give vent to my blazing anger. I will not destroy Ephraim again, for I am God and not man, the Holy One present among you. I will not let the flames consume me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us see your face, Lord, and we shall be saved. Let us see your face, Lord, and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken. From your throne upon the cherubim, shine forth, rouse your power. Let, Let us see, see your, your face, face, Lord, and we shall, shall be saved. saved. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Let us see your face, Lord, and we shall be saved. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his apostles, As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, Cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Without cost you have received, without cost you are to give. Do not take gold or silver or copper for your belts, no sack for the journey, or a second tunic, or sandals, or walking stick. The laborer deserves his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, look for a worthy person in it and stay there until you leave. As you enter a house, wish it peace. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. If not, let your peace return to you. Whoever will not receive you or listen to your words, go outside that house or town and shake the dust from your feet. Amen, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, our Mass intention for today is once again for our nation as we move closer to our 
celebration of our 47th anniversary of our national independence. We pray for the well-being, the protection from hurricanes this season. Indeed, we are still very much recovering from the destruction of Hurricane Dorian in the Northwest Bahamas. Already this hurricane season, we have had five named storms, and it's not yet even the middle of July. So certainly this will be an above average, it's already an above average hurricane season for hurricane activity, tropical storm activity. Let us pray that we be spared the impact of hurricanes this season, but also let us develop a culture of being prepared for hurricanes, prepared from now, so that we never ever get caught unprepared. My dear friends, the prophet Hosea is with us again in our first reading today. And as we recall, prophets have the vocation to speak. They're the mouthpiece. The prophets must speak the truth, and sometimes it's a very uncomfortable truth. But they must speak that truth wherever, whenever, and to whomever that truth needs to be told, even to us. But there is also a tender side to the prophets as well. And we see that in some of the words from the prophet Hosea today. Listen, thus says the Lord, when Israel was a child, I loved him. Out of Egypt, I call my son. How touching and how tender. But this touching tenderness is not appreciated, and that in itself is another story. But notice this in spite of the ingratitude, the Lord says, My heart is overwhelmed, my pity is stirred, I will not give vent to my blazing anger, I will not destroy Ephraim again. For I am God and not man, the Holy One present among you. I will not let the flames consume you. Now, those words represent one of a number of examples in the Bible where God relents and turns away his anger. We see it, for example, in the 32nd chapter of the book of Exodus, where the people have turned away from God and began to worship a golden calf. And God is angry, wishes to punish, even destroy them. But Moses pleads with God. One of the great examples of prayer in the Bible. Moses pleads with God, and God relents and does not destroy the people. We see images of it again in the book of the prophet Joel, where he urges us to return to the Lord with our whole heart. For doing so, perhaps, the Lord will relent and leave behind a blessing. Actually, the readings we hear from every Ash Wednesday from Joel. But those words of Hosea, of Exodus and Joel, what they're doing is showing us attributes of God. That God is just, but God is also merciful. Perhaps Joel put it best when he says, God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Such is the Holy One present among us, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. And that idea, that concept, is actually packed in those words from the prophet Hosea, when it says, I am God, not man, just and merciful, gracious and abounding in steadfast love. Imagine a God like that. Let us pray. Let us put our knees before the Lord this day as we pray once again for the church that it may remain faithful to the Lord despite the challenges before it, and indeed bear in mind that our, our God is a God who is just but merciful. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Francis, our Pope, that he may continue to lead us 
after the manner of Christ the Good Shepherd, with courage and compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation as we come to celebrate our 47th Independence anniversary. We pray that this that we be protected from the ravages of hurricanes this year. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those who may find themselves unemployed at this time, particularly given the current global pandemic. The Lord grant them understanding and compassion and a sense of hope and not hopelessness. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear Again, we put before the Lord all those who are ill, that they may be healed and comforted in God's mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our and for all our own personal needs, which weigh most heavily upon us at these times. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, Good and gracious God, you know our needs, even, even when our words do not express them well. Grant our, grant our needs in accord with your will and keep us always grateful and faithful to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God, Christ. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you of the vine and work of human hands, it'll become our spiritual drink. Bless be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, by taking up the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, with all your clergy, with all your entire, all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take the way the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take the way the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take the way the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but say the word, and my soul shall be body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. And now we make our act of spiritual communion insofar as we're unable to participate in the Eucharist physically. My Jesus, I believe that you are really present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I hunger to receive you. Since I cannot receive communion at this moment, feed my soul at least spiritually. I unite myself wholly to you now, as I do when I actually receive you. Permit me never to be separated from you. Amen. Come to me, all who labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you, says the Lord. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may again, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. I wish you all a wonderful day.